Welcome back. Opening up the pay-per-view main card against Bobby Green, a, a fight that I think a lot of fans are excited about. How excited are you to get back in there? Man, I'm so excited. I'm so pumped. I, I would fight tonight. I'm, I'm so excited for this matchup. It's going to be fireworks. If he wants to bring fireworks, we never know. If he, if he tries to grab and hug me and wrestle me, of course, he's going to make it boring, but I'm coming to make a statement. And uh, a little bit more normal preparation than the last time, I'm assuming, for you. I, I don't think you maybe were cutting as much weight on a plane rushing to get here. Um, when you look back on that experience, how do you feel like that, that helped you grow as a, a fighter, person? Was there any positives that came out even though you lost? Oh, unbelievable. The last fight, not even the fight. The fight, fight itself, in my opinion, was very tough on myself. Just the circumstances, they were crazy, you know. I took the fight on five weeks' notice, flew to America, trained at King's MMA. Then my mother, she passed away. May God give it a paradise. And um, then I flew back to the funeral. Then I had visa problems until the last day. I arrived the night of the weight cut. I cut weight. I made weight. Then I fought the number eight guy in the world. And I couldn't perform as usual, you know. I went to the decision with the guy who fought the fight of the year with Poria. So I'm not satisfied with the loss, you know. But in the end, it made me grow as a person a lot. Not as a fighter only. As a person. It, like... Just the circumstance, if I flash back, I'm like, how did I did it, you know? And this is like crazy. And I think it made me grow mentally a lot and um, it made me much, much tougher. And I know fighters never like to make excuses about things, but I guess how much do you weigh that loss with what happened? Like, do you think that it was just the circumstances? Were there things in that fight you could have done better, regardless? Me, when I step into the cage, I'm like, it's zero, zero, you know? All the injuries, all the circumstances, it's in your responsibility. If you enter the cage, there are no excuses anymore. Then Hooker, he executed his game plan very good, and uh, he won, you know, on points he won. In my opinion, it was not a good performance by myself, of course not. I fought on a back foot. I was analyzing him too much because he knocked out, like, Gilbert Burns. He knocked out so many guys, you know, so I, I was expecting very a very dangerous striker. So I, I kind of took the fight very, like, slowly, tried to read him, and the round went five minutes over, and then I was like, man, five minutes over, and then he tried to wrestle it. I could have done a lot much better and made a lot of improvements, but honestly, also, my mind was not there, man. As much as I tried to adapt, it was difficult to, to, to clear my mind during the fight, but uh, in the end, I think I made a lot of adaptations, improvements uh, since this day, and I'm looking forward for Saturday. Yeah, and obviously Bobby Green, um, like I said earlier, you know, he's very, especially recently, known to put on these really exciting firefights. But I heard you say in your opening uh, answer that maybe he would try to hug you. Do you think that he's not going to necessarily want to get in that sort of uh, gunslinging, you know, back and forth fight with you? We never know, because last fight I was never expecting Hooker to try to, to shoot. Actually, he didn't shoot until the last minute of the first round when I, when I hit him with uh, some nose, uh, nose shots. His nose was bleeding and he was kind of shooting. It surprised me, to be honest, but this is AMA, you know, and we, I'm not a kickboxer. Of course, I have a, a wrestling game, a jiu-jitsu game, and if Bobby Green's tried to wrestle, I'm going to wrestle him. If he wants to grapple, we're going to grapple, you know. But, of course, we are exciting fighters, and I want him also to bring a big show. It's a pay-per-view main card uh, opener, and um, I'm looking forward for fireworks. Thank you. Right, right here. Uh, Bobby's also known to talk a lot when he's fighting, like he's talking at his opponents. opponents. Have you had to uh, implement anything in training to prepare for like that part of his mental warfare? Man, I think this is the last thing I worry about. Even if he tries to whatever, mentally, I'm, 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 I'm that strong. I'm just, I'm just laughing about this. This is like for a kid's game, you know what I mean? Oh, oh you hit me with a good shot, oh, like trash talk, you know? Even trash talk, man, like... What's he going to do? He's going to fight me with his words or with his hands? You know, he have two hands, two legs. This, uh, this is his weapon. It's not his tongue, you know. <laughs> it's, we are not politicians. And in, in the end, he needs to deliver with his punches and not with his mouth. I think a lot of fans, uh, they, they view Bobby Green as this, this striker when he goes in there. He likes to strike. But he only has one knockout victory in his life in like eight years or something like that. So when you're studying his game, what stands out to you from well, Bobby Green? Actually, I saw a lot of holes. I'm very used to guys like this. Like um, I fought kind of similar guy, Mark Diakizi, in my opinion, much more explosive, a much more skillful guy. So the game plan, obviously, of course, is we're going to hunt Bobby Green for 15 minutes. Don't let him breathe. And of course, be aware, be disciplined, not fall into his chaotic game. He, he likes to brawl and make it chaotic, ugly, you know, swing. And uh, we're going to stay disciplined and execute the 15 minutes very well prepared game plan. 
right here. Um, Bobby has a really sort of unique striking style in that he generally keeps his hands really low. As a fighter that has a lot of KO slash TKO wins on his record, is that something you're going to look to exploit? Actually, it's so dangerous with, uh, with fighting without the guard. He, like some guys, you know, they have uh, such a good head movement, they can, they can uh, parry some, like they can slip a lot of punches, but you cannot slip every punch. And especially with the phone's gloves, you just need to crack him with a jab and he can, he can go down, you know? So it's a very dangerous game. And he risked the last couple of fights, and um, I think he's getting hit a lot. I'm not chasing the knockout. If I get it, I get it. But I'm going to say very disciplined. I learned a lot uh, through, the, my la through my eight UFC fights. I gained a lot of experience. So I'm not in that state. I need to go in one minute knockout, hit him with everything, and gas out, you know. 15 minutes, I'm going to say disciplined. If I, if I knock him out, I knock him out. If not, 15 minutes domination.